Hello, Internet! So nice to see you. Today I want to talk about augmented sixth chord. Now, augmented sixth chord per se are actually much more simple than you think, but usually they are not explained in a clear way. And so, in this video I'm going to do something different than what everybody else is doing. Rather than cramming all the possible variant of augmented sixth inside a single 10-minute uh, YouTube video, I'm going here to do only one of the possible variants of augmented sixth chord, and I'm going to do the other ones in future videos, so we have enough time to see exactly what these chords are all about. Because, you see, if we understand where those chords come from, then it's much, much easier to remember them and to use them in actual music. But of course, this is still just a 10-minute YouTube video, and I cannot, in just this time, give you all the possible applications for those chords. So if you want to know all about this in depth with applications to guitar, go straight to my course Complete Chord Mastery. But this video is still going to be a good introduction to them. To understand augmented sixth chords, we need to start from the most obvious chord progression ever. If we are in C major, the most obvious chord progression ever is 1, 4, 5, so C, F, G, and back to C. Yeah, not the most interesting one, right? But this chord progression supports an incredible number of melodies, so composers have a vested interest in making this chord progression more interesting. One way you can make this chord progression more interesting is to play, for instance, the F chord in first inversion. That will mean taking the third note of the F chord, A, and playing it as the lowest note of the chord, so at the bass. If we do that, we have this chord progression, C, F with a bass of A, G, and back to C. And of course, we can also use a G7 chord, so adding an F note to the G triad. It's important to notice that when we resolve the G7 chord to the C chord, the third note of the G7, B, moves up to C, and the seventh note of G7, F, moves down to E. So the third of the dominant chord moves up and the seventh moves down. This becomes important later. Anyway, how can we make this chord progression more interesting? Well, we can start altering some notes of this F over A. One very typical and good sounding alteration is to make this F chord minor by lowering the A note to an A flat. So now we can have this, first C major, then F over A, then F minor over A flat, and then G7 and C. Now, if you ask most musicians today, they will tell you that this F minor comes from the parallel minor key, meaning we are in C major, the parallel minor is C minor, and this F minor is the fourth chord of this C minor key. But we have just seen here that this is just a chromatic alteration. We just move one note down a half step, specifically we just move this note closer to his note of resolution. This A note was already moving to this G note, we are just moving it closer, so we are just moving it from A to A flat, because A flat is closer to G. Is this the only thing we can do? No, for instance, we could take this F over A, and then make this F note here an F sharp, and then resolve it to the G note into the G7 chord. <laughs> So what is this chord here? If we look just at the note, it looks like being an F-sharp diminished triad. In reality, it's much easier to classify this chord as a D7 chord without the root. A D7 chord will have D, F-sharp, A, C, and also we know that this D7 chord will resolve to this G chord, so this seems to be a good interpretation. But again, this was just a chromatic alteration of this F to an F-sharp. So, 
We altered first A to A flat, and then we altered F to F sharp. And if we do only one of those things, we've seen what happens. But what happens if we do both those things at the same time? And this, my friend, is what we called an Italian augmented sixth. And no, I didn't start from the Italian version because I'm Italian and I wanted to give precedence to it. No, I'm starting from the Italian version because it's the simplest one. Incidentally, let me also tell that all those names like Italian, German, French, etc., augmented sixth, have nothing to do with the actual use of those chords. Musicians from Italy, Germany, and France use all the three versions indifferently. And definitely there is no evidence that the Italian augmented sixth was invented by Italian, the German by Germans, and the French by French. But that said, this one here is what we usually call an Italian augmented sixth. Now we see immediately that this is very similar to an A flat dominant seven chord without the fifth. An A flat dominant seventh would be A flat, C, E flat, G flat. So if you eliminate the E flat, we have the same notes, but in the Italian augmented sixth, we have an F sharp, not a G flat. Because these notes come from an F note, not from a G note. And indeed, A flat to G flat would be a minor seventh, but A flat to F sharp is technically not a minor seventh, it's an augmented sixth. I mean, A to F, it's a minor sixth. A to F sharp or A flat to F is a major sixth. A flat to F sharp is an augmented sixth. The names are important here because, as we have seen before, the seventh of a dominant chord resolves down. On this G7, the F note resolves down to the E note in the C chord. But here in the augmented sixth chord, that note, the F sharp, resolves up, not down. Not only that, the third chord of this G7, the B note, resolves up to the C in the C chord. So the third resolves up. But here, in the augmented sixth chord, the third note is this C, resolves down to the B in the G chord. So in a normal dominant chord, the third resolves up and the seventh resolves down, while in this chord here, the third resolves down and the augmented sixth resolves up. This is why this chord is called in a different way and it behaves in a different way. Sure, it's enharmonic to a normal dominant seventh chord, meaning that this F sharp is enharmonic to this G flat, so if you just play an A flat seven, it works. But the way this chord moves from one chord to another, the voice leading of this chord is completely different. And that's why this chord has a different name and a different spelling. So what you can do with that? Well, write a few chord progression that ends with a 5 to 1. So in C, write a few chord progression that ends with a G7 to C. And just before this G7, put this A flat augmented sixth chord. Before that, you can put literally whatever you want. You don't have to have the F slash A just before. Just try this, see if you like the sound, and that will be a simple application of the Italian augmented sixth. And as I said, if you want to know more about all that and how to play those chords and the voice leading and how to do all of these on your guitar, I would recommend you guys check out my course, Complete Chord Mastery, that contains a lot more about chords, harmony, chord progressions, voice leading, everything applied straight to your guitar fretboard. Just be advised, Complete Chord Mastery is not a book, it's a complete video course. And if you have a minute, you can check it out at the link at the top right. If you like this video, smash on that like button, don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, suggestion, feedback, write them down in the comments, I love hearing from you guys, and I'm doing videos based on your suggestions, like this one. This is Tommaso Zilia of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com, and until next time, enjoy!